Well, hello, me lovelies. It's me, Ned Natter, and I'm here to chatter down here on the farm. I hope I get to brighten your day. Over the next few weeks, I'll be here nattering again. I'm sure you know what that is. It's like chattering, and I'd love to gossip after a long day of here taking care of things down here on the farm. <laughs> you know, the bulk who delivers me end food says he can't take that Viagra stuff because of his heart trouble. Clashes with his other medicine, he says. Makes him even more short-sighted than usual. <laughs> but he says his cure for the old ED works very well. The only downside is the splinters. I said, splinters? He says, why splinters, I said. He says, yeah, splinters. You see, the wooden splints I use cause splinters, he says. Oh dear, that made me want to cross me legs, I can tell you. <laughs> well, since I last spoke to you, my lovelies, I had to drive all the way down to Miami to meet the wife's mother. I hate to admit it, the dreaded mother-in-law off her flight from England. I took me neighbour Rush's old Lincoln down there. It's the town car, old one with stickers going back to Bush and Cheney. Of course the good old rebel flag stickers are all over it too. Well it's a long way down on me old tractor I can tell you. Anyway the wife's mother Ethel missed her flight. See the only fly cargo once a day. So I ended up having to stay overnight. I was at a loose end, see? <coughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry about this cough. It ain't the wife smoking at all. It's that fresh straw. Every time I handle it, I cough and splutter all day. What's worse is this time it was the short straw. That's the worst kind I heard. <laughs> Maybe I'm in the wrong business after all. Anyway, like I said, I was at loose end for a day and I met these people at the hotel bar said they was going to a club in Fort Lauderdale so I thought well why not turned out to be not quite what I expected me lovelies I was making up a foursome see me this bloke and two women and believe me they were far from oil paintings <laughs> my so-called partner for the evening was not only high mileage but a bit deaf too she thought John Deere was coming too but I told her I'd left me trapped at home. I'd brought a Lincoln, and she went on about the old president now. She visited his monument in DC. Oh, it was bleeding hard work, I can tell you. A few minutes before the message sunk in. Any rate, I was just going with them. You know, to have a look, that's all. Yeah. Well, hang on, let me finish first. By the way, this is Ned Natter, and this is the Ned Natter Show. When I'm not here, you'll find me nednatter.com So we get to this place it's like a well shall I say a rundown dump <laughs> <coughs> excuse me this cough's getting worse an old motel I think more like a trash can with doors and windows <laughs> inside lots of men only a few women all bleeding swingers though <laughs> so this woman I was with walks in strips off sits down in a big plastic chair <coughs> excuse me again the wipe clean kind. Within seconds she's surrounded by big <coughs> excuse me, cock uh, <coughs> excuse me, cockroaches. She jumps right up and screams. Suddenly she's surrounded by six excited men. <laughs> Seems the roaches were only the warm up act. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. Then in the next room, there's like three tons of human flesh. The only problem was there were only eight people there. Two women, six men. The women looked like a couple of stranded, weighty old cod. The tide had ebbed off and left them with a bunch of old wrecks. Yeah, six of them. Believe me, they'd seen better days. Well, I hope they had anyway. Added to that, there was no running water. They're not worried about washing or even safe sex down there. Most of them are going to die of something worse like an heart attack long before then. The woman I was with says the back room is quieter. By then, all I was worried about was the back bacteria. <laughs> Me bleeding her now, says cleaner. I know it sounds pretty gross. So you know what's next? I took a few urgent steps. Yeah, right out the bleeding door. I got into a taxi, went straight back to my hotel. Had a bath. Anyway, I'm all up to date with this uh, nonsense, you know. This place used to be called Two Medicine Farm. Yeah, and I thought, well, after me recent experience with Viagra and penicillin so now I'm going to call it cause and effect ranch. 
This is Ned Natter here on the Ned Natter Show. When I'm not here, you'll find me at nednatter.com. Now, moving swiftly along, I had to supplement the egg income a bit and started a little RV park. Well, that was my grand plan, but you see, it got advertised all wrong. I put an advert online saying I had a campsite, not RV park. It's a word we use back in England, you know, covers all comers that way, tents, you know, whatever. Well, this bloke who did the advert for me screwed up proper. Put two separate words, see, camp and a gap with the word site. I ended up with a campsite, all right. One tent, a big one, with two people. <laughs> Quinton Quaver, his name is, the kind of person who gives advice, whether you want it or not. He hangs around with an adventurous friend called Coagulate. Well, could be Caligula, actually. <laughs> I'm not so sure. He doesn't say things to shock. He just doesn't know any better. Or does he? In this politically correct world, with that's a BS, I'm not so sure. Anyway, I just think they couldn't afford to camp down in Miami. Quentin said they're staying until the next hurricane, darling. <laughs> He calls everything, everyone darling though, even Claimy Dog. Of course, he's got a dog of his own. Little thing, pink ribbons in its head, called Pollux. Like the star, he says. All a bit intellectual for me. I thought it was called Bollocks to start with. <laughs> Quinson sounds like a bloke from an amateur rep company or something. He did say he used to be an actor. By the look of him, I suppose it might have been the lead role in The Mummy. Yeah, the 1930s one. About the same time, they dug up my old mum, Nan Natter, only she still wears the bandages. <laughs> so, moving on from the Boris Karloff look like, anyway, to use a cliche, darling, time waits for no man. This is Ned Natter here, and the Ned Natter Show, and I'm not sure if you can find me elsewhere, but I think you'll find me on nednatter.com. I got to read a new advert, see, this time. This time it's a local one. Me agent says it's good to have local business too. So, here it is. He's getting me paid for these advertisements. Now I'm so famous, of course. Ah, well, we'll see. I got me agent, Mr. 50% here with me. He likes to steer me career, see? Well, that's what he says. Trouble is, I got me eye out for icebergs with him at the helm. <laughs> The old place stinks of cheap cigar smoke too, so <clears throat> it's going to affect my old uh, breathing here a bit. I'll probably end up choking and coughing myself to death instead. <laughs> okay then, right then, it's, here goes. Right, so let's have a look at this. Ah, oh, yeah, right, okay. Come on down to Honest Dave's. Gently enjoyed cars. Get yourself a great deal on a dream set of wheels at Honest Dave's. Ooh. Hang on a mo, honest. You mean old Dave Smith do you fifty percent? He's nodding. He signed him up two days ago and paid in cash. Well yeah, that makes sense. He ain't got a bank account. Now there's a bleeding crook if I ever saw that. I call him Bold Tires Dave. All his junk is full of rust and filler. Low mileage means it's run the clock backwards. He's the only bloke I know who can drive fifty thousand miles in reverse gear. One careful owner means it's an ex-cop car, belonged to a driving school, or didn't crash on the racetrack. The better business folks, you know, they want to check up on business, you know. they got a special department just for him. Come on, I can't read this. Now 50%'s telling me we already got paid to read the ad. Well, okay then, I'll read it still, but there'll have to be a few changes. Come on down to dishonest dudes where you'll pay through the nose and end up with a pain in the backside for the rest of your life. 50 saying cut it right there. <laughs> I think we better leave it for now. Okay, 50. Sorry. But I don't want anyone to get ripped off. See, it looks bad for me show too. I've got a feeling I won't get paid for that one. Old 50's gone and bitten the end of his cigar off. I mean, uh, you know, the end that's burning. That ain't so good, is it? Anyway, he don't look very impressed. Any, the other day, I got interviewed on a national TV. 
He says it was good to be out there, Old 50 says, you know, you know, like, be a go-to guy for things. It was supposed to be a farming issue, just ended up as bleeding confusing, I could tell you. <laughs> Elsie gone made a recording of it. I can't play it back though, because our batteries are flat. <laughs> but I'll run through it for you, kind of the way it went. Here goes then. But remember, it's confusing, so listen up well. So right away, this interviewer bloke asked me a real strange, well, stupid question. He says that they just learned that now a farm employs no illegal aliens whatsoever. And this is rare on a busy farm in the US, despite the laws. So he says, Mr. Natter, we hear you don't employ illegal aliens on your farm. Is that true? So he says, of course. I'm straight in there, I am. I says, well... That's true, all right. I hate them bleeding science fiction films. I don't even believe aliens exist. <laughs> then the interviewer gets a bit awkward, you see. He goes, but Mr. Natter, you're missing the point. We're talking about people. Of course, I said, you can call them people if you like, but they're bloody weird looking to me. You know, eight eyes, those is where their forehead should be. They probably even got their bollocks on their chins. I wouldn't trust one of them. Even with me oldest tractor. Definitely not with me ends. They probably take them back up into their spaceship and do all sorts of weird experiments on the poor old pluckers. I'd end up with square bloody eggs or something. Mind you, they'd be good for sandwich, I suppose. So anyway, he tries again with a stupid question. He goes, but Mr Natter, he says, I'm talking about undocumented aliens. Of course, I don't know what he's going on about. I asked him, why do they want to come here anyhow? I mean, what have we got to offer folks that whip through space on a flying saucer? I mean, I get travel sick on a bleeding bus. I like me saucer for me cup of tea, not a ride round on. Anyway, this is Ned Natter here. This is a Ned Natter show. You don't find me here. I'm at nednatter.com. Anyway, so he went and asked me political expert old Rush around the corner in the next farm. Rush to the restroom, I call him. What he thinks. As usual, old Rush misses the old point. He says he likes me show, he listens to it on the toilet. But he says on the alien point, I've got a point. So I'm listening. He says, how are we going to defend ourselves? I ask, what do you mean, Rush? I mean, defend? He says, well, with them illegal aliens coming at us from space, we have to build more than a wall now. He says we should take a leaf out of good old Ronnie Reagan's book and laser them out of the sky before they set foot in the US. Then he just nervously says, sorry, got to go. See you next time. So he runs off again. He don't listen. He just spends too much time in that little room. So, you know, seeing old Rush rush off to the restroom made me think about all these new terms and ideas. I mean, in about five years, we'll have six different restrooms to choose from. I remember only two. Now, with a knock-on effects of political correctness, it's going to look more like a bleeding skyscraper than a toilet. <laughs> Just to think, it's an old new set of infrastructure. Good up with the economy, though, I suppose. Forget schools, bridges, roads and walls. We're building stalls. <laughs> this is Ned Natter here on The Ned Natter Show. And you don't find me here, you'll find me at deadnatter.com. You see, I blame all this non-binary nonsense. They say it just means not being specific about your sexuality. So for folks who've never looked between their legs, but simply rummaged around, you know, done a bit of simple self-examination, found out whether you're one or the other, maybe it's time to have a look, quick look down there. You know, anyway... The other day, this guy tells me, it's far more complicated than that, he says some people aren't happy about what they're born with. So of course, I said, you must be talking about them male enhancement drugs then. <laughs> so this bloke, I know, you see, round the corner, he runs the gas station. He's been taking these so-called enhancement pills for weeks. I thought the old thing was a big con, you know, a myth. You know, psychosomatic, they call it, don't they? The placebo effect. <laughs> but apparently, he's had some great results. Only no, not quite where he looked. 
See, he's gone up nearly four shoe sizes in a week. <laughs> yeah, I did say shoe sizes. He had to buy a whole new set of boots, shoes, the lot. <laughs> Funny thing is his wife's always telling him to act his age, not his shoe size. <laughs> so now he can behave like a 13-year-old rather than a nine-and-a-half-year-old. <laughs> Before you ask, I'm a size 47. Yeah, that's right, 47. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're thinking. I rode a big feet, but that's ridiculous. <laughs> But it's the European size. We got you there, didn't we? No one can stick that age and shoe size BS on me. <laughs> anyway, back to our conversation. Everything's completely out of hand. I mean, are we going to start building special toilets for people that weigh a thousand pounds, that have one leg, or no arms? What about a toilet app on the phone that tells the thing when to flush and how much water to use? <laughs> and do non binary folks stand up, sit down? Maybe they do it lying down, and that's going to cause even more problems, I see. Yeah, well, should I say maybe, unless they just set a line-up of portable toilets, hope for the best, you know, 25 in every corner, like non-binary buckets, <laughs> all painted a kind of muddy violet colour. Why violet, you ask? Well, it's a kind of mash-up between the cliché blue and pink, I guess. <laughs> I can just see the political fallout now. In true PC style. The news headlines at least. Today the Democrats have cut down on lines for the restroom by building loads of them. There's something for everyone now. However, the Republicans have lowered taxes, so now it's back to trees and walls. There's no restrooms at all. I have to go now, I'm sorry to say. Elsie's cooked something. Wait to think. Don't know what, but she's gone and invited me agent 50% for dinner. Well, supper, as we say now in the South. So, until next time, I'm at deadmatter.com. Remember, shite matters. Without us farmers, you wouldn't have anything to eat. Not even aliens. Thank you so much for listening. It's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you. And aside from the awful jokes, I hope you'll join me on the Ned Natter show again. In the meantime, you can find me at deadnatter.com, along with me social media links whatever they are when they're at home. So until next time, I want you to keep a smile on your face. Think positive, don't sweat the small stuff. The grass is not always green on the other side. It might just be a free one. <laughs> Goodbye, me lovelies.